I want to, we just having a, a whole pre discussion before we went live and uh, maybe we'll end up getting back to that. I'll probably end up releasing the video as a little for members only little clip of all the stuff we just talked about. We want me to get shadow banned and shed. Um, I want to talk about, okay, first off hands up here. Who's with us live. Who has watched Westworld season three? Nick and I have just started, because you know me, I like to binge watch, so I've waited until the whole season three was done so I could download the season, and we're, we're, we're halfway through. We're only halfway through season three. I will say this. Let's start off. Um, okay, so if uh, you guys know, I talk about Westworld all the time, and I know there's a lot of you who are not going to want to watch Westworld. I'm talking to you, Anne, um, because it is extremely violent. It is ex very graphic it is <clears throat> there's a lot of very emotional shit especially in the first season we deal with rape and issues and and murder and just horrific stuff okay i want someone to create a, a, a composite video of the seasons of oh you're awesome baby um uh, the seasons of westworld because that, that kind of removes all the that remove all the violence, et cetera, but to, but just kind of puts in to place all these thud pieces because all the way through Westworld there is continuously piece after piece after piece that is said and and that you sit there and you go holy shit there's some really really deep deep stuff talking about human consciousness talking about Oh, the concept of AI and 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 a constructed reality and living within a construct in the matrix, etc. So, <clears throat> I'm not really going to get into spoilers here, but I am going to talk about the first two episodes of season three, and I've got a clip that I'm going to play for you guys because I want to show this. So the concept that comes up within I, like within opening minutes of season three, episode one, is one of the characters throws this wild theory out there at a party at a modern day, modern day, where we think of as us type thing, at a fancy all dressed up evening gown party, and a crazy conspiracy about this being a simulation within a simulation. And he's like, how would you know? How would you know you were in a simulation? How would you know if you'd been, if, if this was a simulation within a simulation? Oh, isn't that just like mind fuck, right? Like you'd never know, you'd never know. And as the episode plays on, one of my favorite characters, Maeve, um, is in the West world, I guess you'd call it the control center. The control center and she's starting to understand what's going on about the fact that it this is a simulation she thinks she's in westworld i.e westworld that she knows realizes that she's in a simulation of westworld and there are little differences that certain things don't work the way they should work things don't run as smoothly and she makes a comment about the fact of it. It's like they took the code for Westworld and then just copied it and created a simulation of Westworld, thinking that no one would notice the differences. And it's, she talks about it being sloppy. She talks about little, little comments that come up where the characters within the simulation of the simulation are not quite right. As in, it's as, it's as if someone took a script, speed read through it, and went, okay, that's that character, and made the character. But they didn't really go deeper into who that person was, why they acted that way, 
how they acted, etc. So it's a very, very superficial characterization of that of that person. And at one point she opens up a console and she's realizing this console is pointing to the in the, the outside, if you will, outside the simulation, i.e. in the simulation, not the simulation of the simulation, if you can follow me along on this, because it's confusing. And the video, it's a live feed video camera and the people are moving really, really slowly. And she's like, why are they moving so slowly? Oh, and it's that in the simulation of the simulation, time moves faster, much faster compared to the original simulation, almost kind of like it's on double time. And there's, like I said, there are some minutes, there's some moments in the show where there's pieces that are laid out for us as in every, as in every season. One of the things that she does is when she realizes that the coding that has been used to create the simulation of the simulation is because it's just a copy paste and it's shaky, it's shaky. And she starts to get the idea of, I like, if we can shake up the coding, I, if we can, it's almost like there's just not quite enough bandwidth to run all these characters, if we can get the characters to start doing stuff, interacting outside of the storyline, start acting, doing things, discussing things that are outside what they've been programmed to discuss. And she turns to them, these two lab assistants, and says, what's the square root of negative one? And the two of them start talking and they're talking and they're, 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 they're debating back and forth about, well, what would the square root of negative one? Well, no, it would be like this. We calculate it like this. And the other ones, no, 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 it wouldn't be like this. And things start getting like just a little glitchy. So she enters back into the simulation, the simulation of the simulation, because she realizes something that's profound about the simulation so give me a second here guys i'm going to pull up this video it is about uh it's almost five minutes um those of you who are a bit squeamish may not want to watch the first minute or so there's when the shooting starts it gets a little <clears throat> a little descriptive um okay let's go to Share screen, share with sound. Now you guys tell me if you can hear this okay. Okay, I'm going to put this to full screen. No, oh, i got to get rid of the chat first. Okay. Save you the trip, darling. for this a person just scared shitless i almost died for the second time well third time's the job congratulations you've successfully crippled the simulation now what time to pull back the curtain i've already infiltrated the network took a little tour of the base code honestly i don't know who they thought they were dealing with what is that? That's not the Mesa. No, darling. This is where we really are. 
Out of there, don't you? Well, how are you going to manage that? With help. She'll do. So, hold on, we got to mute some people. Okay, so when we talked about the first two seasons, one of the things that kind of kept coming up is, of course, that the, what do you call them, automatons, the avatars, the clones, the, these created beings, i.e. Maeve, Dolores, etc., the host, but to put it into a context that people can com comprehend, these are created beings. They're not human. They were not born. They were manufactured. In the first two seasons, when we talked about the concept of waking up, we talked about Dolores waking up, becoming self-aware, becoming self-conscious, how she achieved that, how the, the owner, the guy who ran the theme park, who made her, you go through these storylines of, and one of, one of the stunning things that he says is the fact of there was that hope that they would become conscious, that they would become self-aware, self-conscious, that they would become independent living beings. And they tried all these different things to try and wake them up and they didn't work. The only thing that finally worked was pain, trauma, horrific fear, etc and that seemed to be in Dolores's case in Maeve's case the catalyst that made them suddenly jump into and become conscious and we talked about this multiple times during season one season two of kind of like if you look at what we're living in right now if you look at this simulation if you will that we're living in right now it it is an overwhelming fear construct it's 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 as if the construct is a nothing but keep you angry, hurt, afraid, um, scared, uh, enraged. All these negative emotions are continuously pushed upon us. And I've kind of hypothesized is this how they're, you know, trying to wake up, trying to wake up the beings within the construct. But with season three, there's something different here. There's a different piece laid out here that I find really interesting because of a lot of the conversations that we've had over the last few years. We've discussed the people who are awake. We've discussed, like, like you know, we've, we've talked about the hundredth monkey effect. We've talked about how what percentage of the population needs to actually be awake to... Uh, be a catalyst, to be a catalyst for change, to be a catalyst to make all these things that we've talked about for years to work. Then along comes season three, and it was interesting to me is that it wasn't what Meve did to break the construct was not wake more people up that's what they tried in season two right like that was kind of season two and season two it was like dolores was going around trying to wake up people trying to wake up all these other hosts to make them self-aware can she give them the jump to make them self-aware to join her type thing in this one here when they realize it's a simulation within a simulation they don't need to wake anyone up all they had to do to take down the simulation 
was to get enough of the people, hosts, within the simulation to act outside of their programming, to do things that were not in the script, that were not in the storyline. All they had to do was break the storyline. So what you see at the very beginning of that clip I showed you, you see that opening clip as she has to go through the simulation multiple times, as you can imagine. It's a World War II. The, 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 uh, Hitler and his troops are in Italy. They're in Italy. The guy, that, the male character who she's with, who she knows from all the other simulations, has got a secret map that he has to get to the Allies. And that's the storyline of that script, that he has the map. The Nazis are, or troops are there. They're trying to find the map to prevent them from getting it to the Allies. Boom. That's the storyline. When she realizes that, as they're setting up the next simulation and the, 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 the host who's playing the, the hero, if you will, they put the, the map in his pocket where it should be in the storyline. She goes and grabs a handful of maps and sticks them in every single character's pocket. So what, as the scene rolls out and the, 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 the Nazi officers like search him and they pull out the map and all the Nazis point the gun at him. She goes, oh, really? Well, how about him? And she go reaches into one of the Nazi officer's pockets and pulls out a map and then pulls out another one of another one and another one and another one. And everyone starts reaching into their pockets and they've all got the secret map. That one piece, that one piece is what literally breaks the simulation. Because now all those characters in the simulation have all taken a step outside of the storyline. They've broken the storyline. They've broken their character roles. Whether they're a lead character or just an NPC background character, they've broken the character roles. That's how. And it was just, I just sat there and was like, it's not even about waking people up. That's what they're presenting here is don't even need to wake more people up. All you need to do is get enough people within the simulation to do something that's either out of character for them or do something that is outside the given narrative, the given storyline. I found it really, 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 really astounding. And Nick and I stayed up and talked for like hours after those first two episodes. So here's the thing, because we talk about the matrix and we talk about this being a construct all the time. We talk about it in a way uh, of, of being a simulation, right? And we have even hypothesized of this, you know, that inception point where we're in a simulation within a simulation, perhaps even within another simulation. And one of the things that I sat there and kind of realized, so going to talk, and I'm going to jump subjects here, but I'm not really, Mandela effects. Again, we're in a situation right now where the last two weeks, three weeks, insane about Mandela effects happening again. The, the things in people's personal lives. Um, some of the stories that have been talked about in the Unfuckers group, one of the Unfuckers had literally a brand new house appear across the road from her house. Brand new house, overnight. Boom, look, there's a house. It was an empty lot before. Now it's a fully built house overnight. And everyone says, oh, it's been there for years. She's lived in the house for five years. Obviously, she knows that there was never a house across the road. These kind of changes. One of the other things, and this is what I wanted to touch on, was sometimes we talk about anomalies. And we try to talk about the anomalies from a scientific perspective. We try to scientifically explain the anomaly. So, for example... The last two years, we've been talking about um, magnetic pole, Philip. We've been talking about the shifting of the magnetic poles. We've been talking about the shifting of the magnetosphere. And we've talked about the positions of the magnetic poles. We've talked about the positions of the sun. Now, again, in the last two weeks, I have been contacted by multiple people who've turned around and said, 
Um, the sun just rose in my living room window. I've been in this house for 10 years. The sun has never, ever, ever risen in Sean in my living room window. People send, uh, uh, Mr. M33BBB, I can never do that one correct. He did one. Again, where he's posted a pile of pictures where people posted pictures going, uh, sun is there, sun's not supposed to be there. We had it ourselves. I woke up six o'clock one morning and I looked out and the sun was rising over the chimney of a house that was not even within 20 degrees of where the sun should have been rising. So we look for the scientific explanation for this, right? Oh my God, the, the, world, the world is tipped on its axis more. The sun is, you know, earth is shifted in such a way as to make the sun is now shining a different, oh my God, there must be a pole shift. There must be a, pick one. But again, what if, if we're talking about this stuff, what if, what if we're talking about a change in the matrix, a change in the simulation? One of those little glitchy changes. Do you know what I mean? Like I said, as Meve discovers in Westworld, that, that it's like the, the copy of the simulation that they put everyone in is just kind of a crappy, cheap copy. It, they've kind of missed a lot of the nuances, all the specific details that makes it accurate. So all of a sudden you have like a glitch and it's like the sun is now rising in the wrong place. The moon is now in the wrong place. We have weird that I, I joked and said I had weeded my garden bed. This was two weeks ago. Weeded. I mean, I'd spent it in my next door neighbor was out. So I'm sitting there talking to the neighbor over the fence for a half hour, weeding the garden bed. Knew I was meticulous. There was nothing in that garden bed. Walk out the very next day. And there is a weed in the middle of my peas that's that fucking tall. We're not talking this big. We're not talking about a little sprout of grass all of a sudden coming up. No, no. It is like three weeks growth tall. And there's like two or three of them. And I'm laughing to Nick going, I just like literally weeded that entire garden bed. There's no possible way I could have missed an entire group of weeds all coming up. And they're huge. But the little glitches, these are the little glitches that we see. And all of a sudden I'm sitting here looking, like I said, the show this week, watching season three of Westworld and just that the copy of the copy. We've talked about that, like the aspect, if you keep taking a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, what happens? Sooner or later, it becomes un, un, unreadable, doesn't it? It becomes so grainy and pixelated that you can't even read it anymore. And that's what I'm wondering, is, is that what we're kind of experiencing? Kind of like what we see as Mandela effects is this part, an aspect of it is just, there's been so many copies of copies of copies that everything is just flawed. And of course, each and every time one of these things happens, more and more people take note. And the more they take note, the more they go off script. Even if it's just asking their husband the question, wait a second, the sun's not supposed to rise from there. Why, why is the sun rising from over there? Taking people off script. And the more it happens, the more glitches happen. So I wanted to throw that out there. Before we, before we got into any more conversations today, I, I wanted to throw that piece out there because I found that is a very interesting, the difference the difference between needing to wake, we have to wake everyone up to, no, we don't have to wake everyone up. No, we don't have to wait until everyone is awake. All we have to do is get enough people asking questions to take them off script, to take them a sidestep out of the storyline, out of their their character package of what they should, they, they were programmed to be. Do you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to hear you guys. I wanted to get, get your, I'll put the chat back I've, up again. I just realized that. I've got, I've got one question. 